Hello, and this is Leeton again from LeetonM.net. Today is a very special day because uh, tomorrow I'm hopping on a plane. I'm going to go visit some relatives, and I won't be back for a week. Uh, this is the second video in this new channel that I've created, so I'm kind of excited about that. Getting some great feedbacks. Um, but here I am again, and I'm going to bring you a guide on how to create a daily event like um, you can even use this for like uh, abilities that have cooldowns or something like that but a daily event um, for your users for your players uh, something that happens between an hour or between a certain hour a day and ends at a certain hour um, like a special level or a bonus round or something like that but the problem with that is that uh, they can easily cheat by modifying the time on their device, on their phones or computers. And I'm gonna show you how to actually fix that. Um, the, real, uh, the real solution to fixing something like that is to actually have the time hosted somewhere on the internet. That way it's exactly the same across every device as long as they're you as long as they have access to the internet or data or you know stuff like that so without any more explanation let's jump right into it i already have this unity project open or window open i'm about to create a new project and for this example we're just going to name this one why isn't it letting me type <laughs> all right um daily event why not daily event and I really won't need any um, 3D elements right now. So we're going to go ahead and just click on 2D and create project. Now we wait. Do, 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 do. And it's going to be a quick video because I already have the scripts for this project written. So um, not only do I have the scripts, but this is my log. Where should I throw it? I guess we'll just, yeah, we'll just pin it right down here. I have actually went ahead and built a, or I wrote a post um, explaining how it works. And I actually have the script already posted online just for you guys. But I'm just gonna show you quickly, a quick example of how to just tie everything together and bada beam, bada boom. Forget about it. My Italian accent is terrible. All right, so because I don't like the blue, let's do solid color. And, ooh, ooh a nice little, nice little tan. Yeah, why not? All right, I'm just going to quickly create a uh, button of something or some sort. Maybe, yeah, why not? A button. We'll do a button. There it is. Let me just... Where is it at? Um, let's position this center. Um, yeah, that's nice. Now just go ahead and reposition it center. And then for the um, the name of it, um, yeah, tournament, um, yeah, daily tournament, let's just, yeah, daily tournament, let's make the font just a little bigger, and... With the text selected, we'll drop it right up there. And then I think I'll just duplicate the text. Drop this one right down there. And we'll call this event, yeah, event status. Bing. <laughs> I'm really not even going to use um, the text that's in it. But uh, 15, 
No, too small. 20. Sure. Like a dark green, why not make it bold? Boom. As for the button of the text itself, red, no. Green, definitely not. Ooh. Nice little. And nice little purple. All right, so now let's just assume that during the process of the game, at some point, this button will be um, available at a certain time, and then at a certain time, it's not, right? It's a daily event that only occurs for a certain time. And now, when it's not available, you would imagine it would just kind of gray out, fade out like that or something, you know? Or maybe just completely uh, disable itself or something like that. Um, the script that I wrote, completely easy to do this. So I'm just going to quickly, I might just do everything in the same area because this is just for an example anyways. I'm just going to quickly create a script. I'm going to call it time, time manager. Okay. I'm going to use a singleton, a singleton, a singleton, <clears throat> a singleton, singleton, a singleton pattern that will you know what a singleton pattern is it's a it's like sharing one instance so across the board uh dependent uh, it doesn't matter on what scene you're in as long as that singleton was initiated it stays with it when coded properly of course and then i will also create another script and this will just be the the daily event script and let's just use capital B daily event, right? So if I head over to my website, I already have the code and everything posted right here, but boom, 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 I kind of explain how things work. What you gotta do is you're gonna make a PHP file. Just like this one right here. Um, you would open up like a notepad, drop it in there, and then just put it um, somewhere on the internet where you can access it on your site somewhere. Um, in my case, and I'll pull it up for you. Let me see the script right here. In my case, the site, the link, the URL to where I have mine hosted is right here. And all it brings back is the time, I'm sorry, the date, then a forward slash, and then the time. If you know anything about PHP, you can see that all I'm asking for is the date right here, forward slash, then the time with some calculations. And I'm using Eastern uh, Standard Time to round things, you know, to, just to get things into the exact time zone that I am, because I'm also in Eastern Standard, standard Time. So, um, if reading this, you will notice that this is the, I'm so bad at copy, boom. This is the, uh, <clears throat> the time manage, the time manager script that does the, the singleton. So I'm just gonna quickly, pop this open, double click on it, wait for Mono Develop to pop up. And there it is. Um, I think I named it exactly the same as it is on the website. Did I not? Time Manager. Huh. Well, with that said, I could just highlight everything, delete, and paste. Hmm. Let's try that again. Make sure we copy it. Paste it in there. Boom. All right. Everything looks good. Now, right here where it says your path, this will be your path. In my case, this is where I have mines uh, uploaded. So I will just, boom, replace it. 
And that is all. Control S to save. See the little squirrely down here. Wait for any errors, no errors. We're good. Now, the, the daily event. Open that up in Mono Develop. Go back to the post. And this is the example for that. This one is actually called Daily Event Timer. I'll copy it. I'm actually going to replace. Yeah, I'm just going to replace everything. And again, the script name is different. This is actually Daily Event Timer. So I'm going to take off timer. Looks good. Save it. Let's watch this squirrel and see if we have any errors. No errors. And that's, you are basically set up. So now with the button, I'm just going to find the button. Let's just collapse a couple of these. And drag my daily script on it. Now, what is it asking for? Just a few things. Four, four elements, to be exact. It's asking for the button object itself, which I will just drop that in there. Boom. And then it's asking for a text label to display that the event is ready, which um, is actually the second text label I made that I uh, have the text event status on. I'm just going to drop that on there. And now it needs a start time and an end time. Now this is in um, the 24-hour time. I think they refer to it as military time. So 1 o'clock would be 13 2 o'clock would be 14. Right now, my time is saying that it's 2.08. So, and this is the format you're, you're going to use. It's going to be 00, zero colon, zero, 00, colon, zero, 00. That is the format that you use for the start time and the end time. So, in this case, 2 o'clock is 14. So, I'm going to say 14. And it's right now, let's say. 1414 or 1412, which is only about three minutes from the current time. And then once it is 1412, I'm going to have this event end at 1415. So start at two, uh, 12 minutes past two and then ends at 215. Easy peasy. I'm just going to go ahead and play. It's reaching out to the. Whoop. Let's check our error here. Oh, my bad. Another thing we need is just like I said, the singleton needs to be in the scene. Uh, I'm just going to create a, a new game object, empty game object. I'm going to name it Time Manager. You don't have to name it this, name it whatever you want, and drag the Time Manager script on it. And that is all we need. Let's clear the error. Run this again. The script checks for that Time Manager singleton, grabs that one time, um, that one instant that will be shared across the game. Now, the button, you can see it's, it's grayed out, and we do have a countdown until the 2.11, right? I did set it for 2.11. Okay. I guess now we wait. <laughs> we'll just sit tight and wait a minute here and we'll see what happens next. But well, basically, this is all set. I can stop the game and I can go right back into it. We'll pick up right where it left off. Okay, so we have 45 seconds. Stop it. I also want to point out that the script itself, where is it? There is no player preps being used. We're not storing memory anywhere. We're simply checking the time, the real standard, uh, standard Pacific time from the server or internet, as you may refer to it. It's pinging that PHP file that you put somewhere on your server or on the back of your website and send them back that data. Now, let's say they try to use a speed hack 
it's still going to verify. Right at the end here, right when it's finished, it just pinged the server, confirmed that the time was indeed accurate one last time, just in case if someone uses speed hack to speed up um, their game, the ticks would actually go faster. So changing the time won't work, but a speed hack will make the ticks go faster and then it will, it, it, the, the system will believe that the time is actually ran out and it's ready. But just as a precaution, I added that extra validation right at the end using this method right here, right at the end. Validate time to make sure no speed hacks. <laughs> and if we uh, pull this up, we can see right here, we did do a validate time to make sure no speed hacks. And it came back that, okay, the time was indeed true. All it does is it gets the current time. It gets the time that, it's get, yeah, it just gets the current time. It gets the time that you input for the the uh, end time, check the differences. Make sure okay, it really has it really has passed two minutes. It really has passed three minutes, and confirm that the difference is indeed correct. And then the validation goes through. And now you see the button is clickable. The event has started. Your players can now join. And that is how you create a daily event system using the internet time and date. I also want to point out one other thing before I let you go is that we also get the date. The date is 11-20-2012 and the time is 14-11-13. So there is that method that is here you can get the current date now and get the current time now. For this, we have only been using the get the current time now. But you can do this for anything that you also want to get the date. Again, it's Leeton from LeetonM.net. Go to the site, copy the scripts, make your game awesome. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.